So, right, thank you, Mark, for recording us. Um, welcome, everyone. I think other than Boaz, um, we everybody knows each other. Um, Boaz, I'm going to put you on the spot for a second. If you would like to hear a little introduction from each of us, we'll give it to you. But if you don't really care, we'll pass. So you're on the spot. You want to hear some introduction or not? Uh, sure, why not? <laughs> All right. You've passed your first test. Um, so I will start. Um, Susan Ray Reeves, um, I served for part of the time on the CPUC, the Comprehensive Plan Update Committee. Um, I live out on Foreside Road, off Foreside Road on Twin Pond, which is in our two. And um, yeah, I'm retired for two or three years and busier than ever loving it. My, my professional stuff is um, social work and fundraising. But what I always really wanted to do was urban planning. So I'm having fun with this now. So let me pass to Raya. Hey, I'm Sumala. I grew up in this town, so I knew I know what used to be a Pizza Hut, at least <laughs> as back in the the eighties, which isn't that far because our town's a bit older from that. Um, I'm, I participated in some of the activities and was really impressed with the methodology of uh, stakeholder engagement that was implemented, and uh, really like uh, appreciate working with these folks in this committee. Cool, who's next? How about Angela? Hi, I'm Angela Twitchell. I live in Topsom on Main Street, not too far from you there at Town Hall. I uh, am also the executive director of the Brunswick Topsom Land Trust and have served on a number of committees in town over the years. I've lived here since 1999. Okay, is Rick here? Yeah, Rick's here. I'm the king of Prussia, but I am a resident of Topsom, uh, right over here in the Woodside neighborhood. I've uh, been here 22, 23 years now in the family. Um, I'm a structural engineer by trade, uh, work here in town. Um, and uh, basically on the CPIC committee, just because I asked the question of, okay, how's it going to be implemented? <laughs> 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 That's dangerous. <laughs> okay, and I think that leaves Andy Sturgeon. Hi, my name is Andy Sturgeon. I've been a resident here for four years. I manage an engineering company in Yarmouth, Maine. Uh, I've been in the land development uh, consultant business for 41 years. I'm also vice chair of the TDI Corporation Development Inc., which is part of the town also. Um, have a lot of interest in what happens with the rezoning. I just think it's important to make sure that we're off into the right direction and you know, as best as we can to serve everybody. You're welcome. Okay, so now. Joe's here now, too. Joe, yes. Great. Uh, Joe Feely, uh, retired, uh, I'm an architect. I spent my last 15 years as a staff architect at Golden College. Um, <clears throat> I've lived here for eight years. Um, I lived uh, initially on Westport Island and then Bath and then Portland. And uh, I attended a lecture at the library that uh, Rod participated in and got inspired. So I signed up for the update committee and then uh <laughs> i think i think susan kind of uh persuaded me to stay on to the implementation committee which made sense uh there were only two of us who were able to continue on and uh, you know, that kind of continuity can be helpful uh, and i just think topson is poised for uh for some for an interesting future and a, and a, and a potentially very, uh, very good one. I want to compete with Brunswick. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. 
Okay, so now on to any staff who, who need to introduce themselves. Boaz, do you know both Kate and Mark? Yes. Okay, so Boaz, tell us a little about yourself. Uh, I'm a rising junior at Bowdoin College. I'm studying history and I'm a government minor. And I'm interning in Mark's office this summer, but I've been throughout the different offices of the town, um, just learning about what municipal government's like. Um, and I'm excited to be here tonight. Terrific, glad you're with us. You're always welcome. We meet once a month on the second Monday at 4.30. So um, do we have any members of the public with us today? I can't quite see, but I don't think we do. We do not. Okay, so let's just pause for agenda review for a second. Um, we're gonna start with you know, administrative items, go on to streets for people and end with recode. Um, does anybody have anything to add or adjust? Okie dokie. So let's do the quick item, which is to approve the minutes of the June 13 meeting. I sent those around with the notice about a week or so ago. Um, what I'd like to do is if anybody has anything to change on them, shout. And if it's silent, I'm gonna, I'm gonna assume that it's all good. <laughs> uh, Susan, I'll just say I did go in early today, make some minor edits directly on the drive site. Oh dear. That's a proof of your copy edit. They're Beautiful. mostly, you know, Editorial. yeah, yep. yeah. Uh, readability commas and like that. Yeah. Well, a couple word choices. So pretty minor. Yep. Okay, so they weren't the ones that were circulated, but. Um, 99% Okay, so why don't we just say with minor edits and those will be sent on to be posted um, that we will go in faith that these are gonna be approved. Yeah, again, no changes in decisions, content. Great, thank you, Raya. Um, so seeing no grumpiness, <laughs> They are approved. Okay, on to streets for people. Um, now, I think Mark and I were the only people present for the update to the select board, um, focusing on our request to form a bicycle pedestrian committee for Topsom. Um, I preceded that reading out the memo that we sent with a short update in a more general way because it had been roughly six months since we updated the select board um, on our work in general. And so that came first. And then um, there were some questions uh, and comments. Um, uh, you know, about the request. And um, I will note those briefly. Um, the first thing that I noted um, in terms of the a concern voiced by the select board is, um, how shall I say this? Um, it was clear in our memo that there have been some ongoing conversations with people who are interested in the issue of bicycle and pedestrian safety in Topsom. And those people are interested, you know, we stated that they're willing to serve on such a committee. And um, um, unhappiness with having those conversations ahead of the select boards forming a committee was voiced. And so that was, that was the way things started. Um, another specific question was really, or more general question I should say was, what does the town gain by having such a committee? And um, 
I think somebody else on the select board actually answered that by saying that there was a need for advocacy. Um, another concern was that staff could be taxed more by having to be liaison to a new committee. Um, and, and a final question or comment, I should say, is um, a couple of people at this point had on the select board had said that a workshop sounded like a good idea. And so I think the final um, comment really was, you know, speaking in favor of having a workshop and yet noting that this is a priority for many town residents that has appeared in multiple comprehensive plans and it is time to act. So overall, I think it was a very positive response, um, although with some clear cautions. Um, and right now, um, Derek, I think is exploring uh, dates with the select board when they are available to have a workshop. So I think they kind of like to do it on the Thursday cycle. They meet on the first and third Thursday. Um, so I, I guess we would, the workshop would be generally before the meeting, but they will come back to us with possible dates. So that's where we stand. Workshop is next up. Um, the other thing I would say is that um, three people who have been involved in those conversations and stand willing to complete applications and serve on such a committee if it's formed, um, attended the meeting, plus one of their spouses, and a couple of people spoke um, in favor of forming such a committee. And another town resident um, a couple wrote in um, simply, I think, seeing that it was an agenda item, they wrote a speaking in favor of forming such a committee. So it felt like uh, a good reception and um, we'll have an op opportunity, we see pick and the folks who are willing to serve um, to, you know, create a workshop environment where some information can be shared. Um, I mean, one of the things I've been looking at in the news, both local and national, is that the, the number of injuries and fatalities um, of pedestrians and cyclists has risen dramatically over the past few years. So I think we're, we're in need of this. So let me just back up and see um, if folks have any thoughts or ideas and have some discussion here. Speak to the owl. Yeah, Susan, this is Rich speaking. Just what sort of uh, involvement, preparations, thoughts, participation in we want to kind of commit to the workshop? Well, um, that's a good question. <laughs> um, I, th you know, obviously it's a CPIC responsibility, and yet we have. Um, six people who are willing and, and more knowledgeable probably than most of us. Um, so maybe we could have um, a sort of a joint planning session. Um, maybe during our workshop day, we have a work, workshop opportunity on the 28th. So Can I jump in, Susan, for a second? Uh, let me just ask if there are other folks on the committee who have 
any ideas or questions, you know, specifically, because I think that's an important question. How do we prepare for this once we know the date? Um, and then we'll, then we'll hear you, Mark. I think that's going to help you answer that. Yeah, just go into that because I think I, if you have, if you're willing. I, I think what I heard them saying is they'd like to know. I don't know if it's some of them seem to be asking a little bit about duration. You know, how long this would last? What would the charge look like? So if you were getting prepared for the workshop, it might be um, give them some more information on what the charge would look like for the committee. You know, what? How long would it last? What are you looking for them to accomplish? Stuff like that. Sure. Well, we wrote that out. It's in the memo. Um, and the, I mean, the duration is, you know, you have a standing committee and it, there's no, I mean, it, it gets established and it, it probably has plenty to do for a long time <laughs> beyond my lifetime, I would guess. Um, I don't know. Does anybody else have any comments on that? We what we did with the charge is we kept it fairly brief, but there's a lot of room in that charge. Um, and, and you know, if if I heard that question come up from one select board member, and when I probed a bit with her because I was puzzled by some of the comments, um, there was not really any clarification there that was helpful to me. So, you know, we had a, what we did is we had a charge with five bullet points. Um, did you get the sense, Mark, that we need to be a lot more thorough on that? In general, I think um, I agree with your summary of the meeting. And I think in general, I think it was positive. I think and maybe it's just because they haven't dealt with it as much as you guys have. I think it was more some of the members just wanted more information about what the committee would be doing, what it would look like. And, and like you said, a lot of it may be in the memo, but I think some of it just may need to be gone over again or something. Hmm. Anyone um, else have any? Well, on that, on that, the um, I guess there's a fear of how many committees might there be, right? Uh, it, it, could we do anything to see what number of committees other towns of our size have. And also maybe the rate of committee creation versus committee retirement in our town, and, you know, kind of this way. Or, or check ourselves to see whether another committee's starting to look like a committee for everything, or if this is, you know, a, a right sized number of committees and, you know, a fit, you know to, to, that, to that sort of question. Just, Certainly, we're very lucky to get after our short staff and, and the two town committees that I'm in. And so, certainly, there could be that question if we're going to have one more. Will we have two more? Will we have 10 more? Um, Is it possible it could be a subcommittee of CPEC? It possibly set up a pretty number of different ways and things. And I think. You're right, Ryan. Some of the board members were concerned about um, staff in another committee. Um, one thing in the favor of the staff part is that uh, Chief Hagan talked to Tom Manager Strepchansky, and he said that if it was one meeting a month, he'd be willing to serve as the staff person. So that part may be partially covered, or maybe completely covered. Um, but I, I think it, my sense wasn't that they're against, certainly not against pedestrian safety. Um, they are mindful of staff time and, and things. And it, I think wanted just a little better idea on what the committee uh, would be doing and and um, you know why it's needed and things. I probably wouldn't spend a lot of time looking at similar towns and trying to figure out how many committees because I think their answer would be, yeah, it's, you know, it's based on what we need for top zone. If we need 12 committees, then we'll do 12 committees depending on what, you know, um, the charter committee just kind of, it served its purpose and it moved on. The community center committee has been through like a couple different specific tasks. Now it's on the task of doing its needs assessment. So I think maybe just a better idea about what the purpose is. And, uh, and it could be that you think this should be a permanent committee and here's why, but I think they just need to hear those reasons and stuff. Yeah, I mean, I feel strongly that what we're recommending is a permanent committee, not an ad hoc fix a problem. I mean, it's an ongoing uh, need. So we need to better articulate that if that was not obvious. 
I agree with you. Does anyone disagree with that statement? <laughs> Good. Um, my understanding, I you know, I'm I understand the caution around staff time, um, and we do have quite a few committees. I mean, I remember um, hearing the previous town managers um, sort of appeal at one of the town meetings that I went to, which is what got me involved. Um, you know, he said, we rely on various standing committees and ad hoc committees for the town to do its work and we have vacancies. And so I showed up a couple of weeks later <laughs> and uh, headed over to CPUC. Um, but my understanding, and Mark, please correct me, um, I think we have a couple of committees that are perhaps standing committees that are not, that have no one on them. And I would think that they're kind of sitting um, ready for re possible retirement. <laughs> I don't know, but um, I-, I Even two and eight and one or the other, yeah. <laughs> There's a tree committee. And um, I don't know what's happening with the town meeting committee, but that's been going on. Yes. Resting, yep. So I, I think maybe I'm going to assume that maybe a little bit more explicit um, spelling things out about what the vision is in terms of the duration is ongoing, and this is would be a permanent standing committee. We did say up to nine members. Um, and I, I, I don't, my assumption is that it may be helpful to remind people um, about some of the data that has led to people's concern to, in a desire to form such a committee. Um, there was a lot of you know, in some ways overwhelming, but there's a lot of data in that 2018 um, pedestrian safety mitigation plan that Maine DOT did. Just focusing on a few items and maybe updating a few of those items. Um, and also, you know, one of the many recommendations that that mitigation plan includes is the forming of a bicycle pedestrian committee. Um, so, you know, I think maybe just having another um, opportunity to have the conversation, a little bit more information, um, may be enough. We can't find a date that we can all meet together, Susan. Um, who's the head of that group that we try to work? Are you still kind of leading them until they form or? I'm just offering a Zoom link. <laughs> Um, but, you know, it's, uh, there's going to be, a, that group will meet on this coming Monday. So one of the possibilities is for any member of CPIC to join in that. That would be a possibility. Person then, because then, um, you know, if they even want to share whatever presentation material they might consider for us to review, uh, just another idea. Yeah. So, you know, who is their leader? Do they have somebody? I know it's they don't have an official leader. But it's because it's not a it's not a formal committee yet. Nobody has been sort of elected chair or two co-chairs. Um, and you know, I think the hope of the group is that over a short amount of time, once the committee is formed, that additional people, you know, with the announcement that such a committee is being formed maybe others will join so that there can be a full complement of nine. Who knows? Um, well, then I, I guess just out, offline, then I'll ask you for a name then, or, you know, how we interact with them. I yeah. I mean, your okay. spouse has been a really key member uh, of that group. Yeah, <laughs> so. We separate our lives sometimes. <laughs> um, no, that makes sense. I can ask him. Um, just a quick note. We have several boxes of that 2018 pedestrian safety mitigation plan in the planning office. If anyone doesn't have one and wants one, or if it would be helpful to hand those out to people, um, or if anyone from the select board wants a copy of that, 
I'm really just trying to save space on the shelf here, but we have many copies. <laughs> That's great, Kate. That that information was actually shared with the folks on this group, and they were all encouraged, please stop by and get a copy. Um, I don't know if they did or not, but I assume that a couple people did. Um, yeah, but it is a good reminder that I don't, I'm sure the select board got those originally, but if one of the recommendation is to form a bike ped committee, that might be a good reminder for them that that was in there in a plan that the town did. Yeah. Yeah, and and they were actually reminded of that. I mean, they have a lot of preparation and reading to do, but the fact that it's both in that 2018 mitigation plan and in the comprehensive plan um, in Streets for People, um, you know, there's a lot sort of pushing all of us in the direction of forming this committee. Yeah. So I think the next thing is to let's see when the date is. Um, and there are two opportunities I see right now is, you know, for, for CPIC folk to join the bike ped group meeting on the 18th. That's at the same time, 4.30. Um, I'm sure they wouldn't mind at all. Um, or there's our fourth Thursday meeting on the 28th. Um, I'll actually be on Vinyl Haven Island, but I think I can figure out Wi-Fi to, <laughs> to join you. Um, so those are two different dates, the 18th and the 28th, depending on when the select board would like to schedule us. Okay. Are we ready to move on to our center, our main meal? <laughs> the code Topsum. Um, uh, clarification for the minutes. I'm recording yep. that perhaps they could join us 28th, but what's, what's going to trigger that? Somebody has to invite somebody for that to be a real possibility, right? Right. We, what we're waiting for now is the select board to figure out some dates. Um, that item to follow up on because and and our workshop session, you know, the fourth Thursday is always sort of a standing session for whoever can should come, and we could invite the bicycle pedestrian gang to join us, and I would be glad to do that if that's the you know we can do this between meetings. Okay, thank you. Any final comments before we move on? Thanks for that, Raya. Okay. So our first agenda item under Recode Topsum is, <laughs> it's, a, it's a quick one. Um, Kate has described the feedback in a memo to Kirk and Leslie and my understanding is there is no feedback coming at this time because Leslie is involved in sort of some family emergency to tend to. She's had to travel. And so she hasn't really had a chance that that was occupying her last week. And so we're hoping that this week she'll have a chance to look at that and I thought that maybe one of the things we could do today is look at the maps and offer additional feedback beyond the 1.5 option um, and see if we could, if we're able to reach at least a tentative decision on drawing back, um, scaling back the geographical boundary somewhat um, that might be a good way to use our time today. And Kate, for our last meeting, had prepared maps and colored pencils for the occasion. So, I, you know, some, some folks have had, have found the color um, coding problematic because sometimes the colors are 
have such a slight difference that it's not easy to read those maps. So that's a possibility. Any thoughts about that? Uh, Susan, thoughts about what, what specifically? About looking at these maps. Oh, okay, yeah. And actually, you know, one of the things we talked about is one or two possible areas where we would not lop off an entire map, but, but scale, you know, bring the boundary a little tighter so that we would we're very slightly reduce the geographical area that we're focusing on. And I think there are some things to talk through there. But I, I think very definitely we ought to, ought to work on that. Because I think that would sort of complete the feedback that Leslie needs to really proceed. Um, she may still have some questions after this, but you know, that would give her the. Okay, let's get at it. I thought that was our agenda item. I thought we talked about it. So yeah, let's, let's do it. All right, I don't know how exactly we're gonna do this virtually and in person, but I have math my PDF, so um, I will do my best here to show you what I have. Hope it didn't take me off the drive. While you're doing that, can I ask a couple questions? Yeah. Susan? Sure. Um, I, I'm not 100% sure I understand what was included that we were, were doing the code, uh, the recode on that area exactly, and what we're talking about reducing. And I'll just use this as an example the Crooker site. I know that yep. it's more personal than anything, but I'm using it as an example because I, I, I know it. We've had meetings with the recode the consultants and we've talked a lot about what ought to be allowed there and what shouldn't be allowed there. And I thought we were on a good path. Is this 1.5 going to just throw that out until other years or, or what's when, when you say reduce the footprint what are you going to throw out some of the areas well that's that's the question andy i mean the thing that we've talked about tentatively um and you know no one person makes a decision here it's the committee as a whole that's making the decision but the conversations that i've been part of have talked about drawing there's one particular map and it's the one with the orange if, if you have maps printed out so i have what? maps printed out i'm having trouble letting it open things on the drive it just happens to me sometimes Which we'll map? be patient so just while while you fiddle with that kate the the thing that i'm thinking about is the, the i think it's called the north village up yeah. 201 so that instead of extending a lot beyond the high school and the middle school that we would draw draw that boundary back a bit yeah you either need to go upstairs to connect to the network or if you want to do that let me ask you a question to clarify something that may address part of uh, andy's question so let's look at the the zones outside of the intentional grow tops and fair the color maps we've been looking at here in the code cleanup say whatever a zone you know, way out on 196 on the border of which is a you know r2 or r4 or whatever it is are those designations and zones going to remain intact as is so if we pull the parcel back it just reverts to whatever the current designation is yeah. i believe that is the case and it's it's a matter of there may be a few mm -hmm. changes but the changes would be to clean up to clarify to um eliminate contradictions um on that point okay good yeah, yeah so what i have to show you all which mark is hopefully i got kicked off our network so mark is helping me with that so i can share these online but what mm -hmm. i have is i have a map that shows everything Leslie did in one view 
I also have one that shows our current zoning for the same area. And then what we started with, with the consultants with um, sort of the simplifying editing module one was we asked them, or I asked them to start with our more familiar Thompson Center zones. So that's why Crooker isn't on that map because that's not currently a Thompson Center zone. It doesn't mean it won't be included. Right. It was it, just it, a starting point. I guess I should be clear too, when I talk about Crooker, this isn't something that's gonna happen in the next few years because we've got to rezone to move the mill. You got to move the mill and then you've got to come back to the site. So we're talking three, four, five years before we actually going to be doing what's the pretty picture in the conference of plan of the crooked quadrant. Um, so, it, you know, I guess pulling back is the end of the world in that case. I just want to make sure that we don't leave somebody else out that couldn't wait five years like we could. Yeah, and the, the idea is that there will be a chapter of the new code that, that's a revised master plan development chapter. I don't know if you looked at the one in the current code. It's super confusing. Um, and that master plan development chapter could allow um, any property over three acres to adopt an internal street network and or kind of choose from the menu, the existing menu of building forms is the way I was thinking about it. Um, yeah, and then, you know, I sent around the links to all the other code drafts um, for basically the rest of the code. We're still waiting for a few sections. Um, to kind of figure out exactly how everything is going to fit together. Um, so, you know, and those areas are going to be super important too, um, because why isn't it loading? Um, you know, like when Tom Lister and I were talking about it, like most of what we review is not in the tops and center zones. So those areas outside, you know, tweaks that we have to that are also going to be super important in implementing the comp plan. And I'm trying to make the internet work on my laptop, so someone else should talk for a minute. Well, I did. I did take a look at your links, and, and uh, I have several questions. I know that um, when you hit each link, you've got a lot. You've got a document that's, mm -hmm. that's marked up. Um, and I looked at the industrial one, um, and it, it, was, it was very short. I didn't see anything that was, was going to change there. That, and yeah, so, no changes there. But there is a light industrial zone too. Are we looking at that? We haven't got to it yet, or yeah, that I'm not sure why that is not in that current um draft, but I made a comment requesting okay. it to be okay. added. I just wanted them to bring up it wasn't in that you know, it wasn't in that uh yeah, right? Couldn't find the link to the light industrial. Yeah, it wasn't in there, but it will be. Is there something I can share? Oh, now I got it now. Sorry. Thank you, everyone. All right. So this is not going to be as easy. Maybe I should also forward these to Angela and Susan. This is not going to be super easy to look at online, but yeah. So if people in the room want to look at these. And I've got those printed out at home, so don't worry about it. And I'm happy if you're, it's easy for you to forward it to me, that's fine by me. Okay, Roger. Do you want to show your screen? Yeah, I'm going to. Um, I'm actually forwarding what you just sent me to Susan and Angela too, so that. I think if you got four, the first one is blank, but the next yeah, one is relevant. Yeah. All right, thanks everyone for bearing with us as we explore. Is there are five different maps, right? Well, I combined them all into one for us to look at. So can you wow. see one? And then you guys can pass this around in person. So this is Leslie's yeah, module one zone draft. So this is what she considers all the tops and center zones and how she did it, where it's not really familiar zones. It's these sort of colored sections by parcel of what their current sort of zoning would be. So, you know, Kate, it's so wonderful to see these all in one piece. <laughs> it, my poor brain has had such a hard time looking at them as separate because we have to have that bird's eye view. That's what, that's the town we know. Yeah, and then I'm gonna see if we can look at this. I see my little Zoom saying. 
but so then this is the current zoning for the same area so this is what we have now this is the li the r4 all these current zones okay um, does that correspond to this map yeah yeah so those are current okay. zoning right. yep so you can see like here's the cooker site that's currently commercial corridor it sort of has its own zone um tops and thermal as you see we've got village center middle village lower village um and then what i also have is sort of what we started with as what we are calling familiar zone names in Topsom Center. So this does not mean this is the whole area that we would be talking about for Topsom Center. These are just some areas that, like if we talk about it, can you see this one? Oh, you guys aren't seeing what I was showing you, I think. Okay. I'm not seeing current zones. I'm seeing Leslie's zones. Right. I was concerned I couldn't tell yeah. the difference between your current zones. There we go, there we go, beautiful. Uh, them side by side, not fancy enough. So here's the current zones. Um, people here in person, you can look at them all side by side. I don't know if we all want to like get around the table or something. Um, and then I think you know, it's a screen. Okay. We can. I'm all, I'm all set. So I'm ready. And this is what we started with for familiar zones, like places like upper, lower, middle village, we've talked about in here a lot that everyone feels like those are familiar zones that we kind of know what they look like, we kind of know what building types are there. Um, the mall, I feel like is also similar. We know what kinds of buildings are at the mall. And even in terms of the changes to how we develop the mall, you know, we kind of know that's been in the code for a while, trying to encourage and fill out there. Um, so that's pretty familiar. And then the other one we left in here was that um, former base housing Topsom Annex neighborhood. Um, because that seems, I mean, I know Mark can speak to this probably more than me too, but this seems like an important area to leave into the recode to help it redevelop um, in terms of uh, more housing in Topsom. And then you know, some of the questions we have, like, we'd be looking at the boundaries of the mall zone in the upper village, um, as well as, um, you know, the Crooker site, does that become its own zone? Um, these places west of 295, same thing. Um, or do we want those to be, you know, we should also talk to some property owners, because a lot of these are large parcels owned by one person. You know, do they, like, do they want to sort of have a master plan development in 10 years, or do they want to be sort of part of the recode now? Um, so that's kind of where we are. Are we considering anything west of 295? Yeah, so in Leslie's map, she had um, what's this parcel here, mm -hmm. and then this parcel here. Right. Um, these are a little trickier because we don't have sewer and water out there mm -hmm. by and large. So what you can build there is not as straightforward as what you can build, say, at the mall. Um, but yeah. So it would be it would be more problematic to adjust the boundaries back of that. I mean, is that is that an area that we basically should should uh, leave as is because of the sewer and water issue? Well, I mean, I know that like this area, some of the people involved have given the planning office very basic inquiries about what they could build there. Um, so we, it can definitely still be part of this. And especially if we're talking about master plan development, internal street networks for those areas, stuff like that. Um, but it would not be the same kind of like yeah, I'm not an engineer, but you can't have sprinklers. <laughs> I mean, you might be able to have sprinklers. It's complicated. Mm -hmm. Rick's looking at me, so I'm going to let Rick talk to me. Well, no, I said that those type of questions of the office is that all addressed in the um, master plan development process. 
Yes, yes. So there, yeah. So for these folks out here, if they, I think they would be able to get water, but not sewer. So then they would be able to. That's correct. Yeah. So then, you know, for example, something like a warehouse might make sense to build up here right by the highway. Um, and you could also put some housing in. There's housing going in over here already. Um, but it just wouldn't be at the same density that we could build, um, like in the village or the mall area. But if it was classified as a master plan development mm -hmm. site or zone, you know, and master plan process address how that is, or is the classification under the master plan going to hamstring or put it sideways that, like, okay, she's now we need a conditional. I just want to mention the, the, you know, it's it's one thing to say that you know there would be no work in a certain area for five or six years. In I may be wrong, but I think that's irrelevant. We are recoding the growth area, knowing that a lot of what we are coding for is not going to materialize for five, 10, 25 years, but we are recoding now, at least in line with the 2019 comprehensive plan, because the current code is very far away from that vision, very far away. And every development that's happened in the it's at center of town has, has occurred with an exemption, nothing has met code. So the need to change the code and update the code and revise the code is strong. The missing piece here is that we have, none of us except staff have seen the master plan development draft. And I might be wrong, but Kate, when I inquired, it's I realized that the, the draft that you got was not for us. It was a more generic draft from a, for another town. So if we make the decision, which I hope we do, that 90% of the area that we have previously been discussing is in play, including the west of 295, including the annex, including the, the major catalyst site we've been dealing with, which is the Crooker site, that's a master plan development, that all of that boundary is included. The, the, you know, that's what's up for grabs here. And it's very helpful to see the areas with our more um, familiar descriptions. Um, but I'm also hoping that that, the, the two major pieces that are not in there, which is west of 295 and the Crooker site, um, I hope we decide will be in there, that the part that's not in there is north of the annex along 201. That there's the, the landowner there has no particular plans to do anything specific at the, at the current time. And that's, a, that's an area that we could back off from and get to work on the rest of the, the territory. Not clear on north of the annex on 201. The map that's up on the screen right now. I think this area, the brown. That um, is the, labeled as Thompson Annex. So is it just a small parcel of where the mouse is right now that you're talking about? Yeah, so hold okay. on. let me pull up. Um, the current zone. You can see. So the top to manage is this R4 and DP2 area. Right. So what I removed is the light industrial, which is this okay. sort of area. Um, I will say the other thing with the sort of familiar zones that I picked out, I picked all of those out because we have previous planning efforts that relate to all of those. So there was a Totsum Annex master plan made at one point. We have a bunch of village master plans. Um, we have the Totsum Fairmall Road master plan. So 
I think that in terms of also our ability to kind of share this with the public and really understand the form and what we're looking for in that neighborhood, it helps when we are looking at these neighborhoods that are, you know, they, they have a history of planning efforts. So we're trying to implement that. Um, this sort of light industrial area, we haven't really done any planning for before and the landowners currently do not really seem interested at all in changing what they're doing um, and if someone wants to change it in the future that would be great but i don't want to get involved in like trying to force someone to do something they don't want to do okay and susan had said it's irrelevant to take it off the slate because it's not in the near term for future term, but we are trying to scope this to become a manageable size, right? So mm -hmm. we are trying to carve down. So that's what the, the kind of compromise we were looking to see for this 1.5 strategy, right? So taking out that LI makes sense. But Susan, you were questioning whether the Kirker site made sense or not then based on, on the nearness of planning? Well, I, I was... It's not in the um, sort of familiar names um, boundaries, and you know it's clearly one of the main catalyst sites, um, sort of in the vi vision of the 2019 plan. So it seems to me the the whole Crooker site ought to be in there. It's a it will be governed by the code in a master plan development, which none of us except Kate have seen. And so, you know, I would certainly not want to exclude that. And even the area that's on the west side of 295, um, you know, nothing, nothing may happen there because no water, no sewer, but knowing that there's no water sewer, it's not something the town is gonna to take over. A developer would have to do something with it. It, there's no, it seems to me no reason not to zone it. Um, but I'm, you know, I certainly will stay open to hearing discussion and seeing what people think. Well, I think something else, I'm gonna switch back again. Sorry, everybody. And feel free to interrupt me too, but something else, there we go. So something yep. else we can also think about with these familiar zones is I also pick these out because I think when you look at all of these areas, it gives you a pretty good sort of menu of different types of development and buildings to choose from. Um, if you think about the different sort of building styles that you find in the lower village versus the mall versus the upper village. Um, which can also potentially help us think about what some of these areas like Crooker or these West of 295 areas, you know, how would they fit in? Would they be more like an upper village or like a mall or like, does that make sense? I, I'm confused <laughs> about how we lost all of these really important areas that were core to our work before. I mean, I think the last meeting that I was at the only thing we talked about taking out of the scope was that, I guess it's called light industrial. I didn't realize it was quite so big, but I, I, that's the only thing I heard us say we wanted to take out of the scope of work. So I'm sorry, I'm looking confused, but I'm wondering how we lost some of the core areas. They're not lost as in gone forever. I just started with these areas because I could name, I felt like we could all name and understand them and it was a place to start and build on. Okay. So we could draw a boundary around what is known familiarly in the town as the Crooker site. And that could be, you know, that's a good name for it. Um, I don't know what to call west of 295, but. <laughs> Did it not have a name in the comp plan? Well, it's called Crooker in the comp, comp plan. Yeah. It did. That's what it's labeled in the conference. The Crooker site. Are you, you were asking about the other ones on the hill? Oh, on the other side. Yeah, off of Smith Road. Is that what you were asking, Angela? Any of them. I was just thinking whatever we called them in the comp plan, if they don't have another name, seems to be consistent. I mean, so we know what we're talking about. Yeah, there was nothing on the other side of the road in the comp plan that I can see. 
I'm looking at the main area. Yeah, that was not in there as a catalyst site, I don't think. Yeah, so I, I mean, for me, I don't know where other people are thinking. I, I wasn't thinking we were rejiggering everything. So I would think we would stick with what we had for the catalyst sites, except we wanted to take out the, the light industrial. Do, I guess I, I have a similar confusion. It's a little more limited. I thought what we were talking about was the parcel at the the large parcel at the very north of the tops of annex. Yeah, but that's not, what I thought too. But not the high visibility areas, uh, not in terms of what's currently there, but thinking, you know, 10 or 20 years down the road, uh, if, if businesses that are there transform, you know, what's the, what's the vision for that? Um, the other thing I have a, a problem with the way uh, the, let's call it the tops of annex for now. I think we can do better than that. But um, is that there, there, it's really divided into three areas. There, there's the well four actually. There, there are businesses. Uh, there are the, uh, the middle school and the high school and all the sports fields, which is municipal. And then you have uh, the housing at the top of Can Am Drive. And then you've got the long slender parcel, which is, uh, according to the tax maps, is owned by the state. So th the way it's been depicted so far lumps housing in with municipal. And it, it seems to me that, that we ought to reflect more accurately what's, what's actually there. Kate, have you had time to probe into what's there? <laughs> Sorry, what's where? At the Tops of Anna? Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is something where I'm going to say again, Mark knows more than me, but there's one large property owner for the residential. The Parliament and Congress, all the currently built ones that were housing, right. are owned by one person. Uh -huh. um, and then there's a leftover piece that was Liberty that's had all the housing that was there torn down. Okay. still on my Helios group. Yes. So that piece strip is kind of like in between the school's piece and the existing housing. Uh -huh. It just seems that in thinking about the future that uh, what's housing, it, it will probably stay housing. Mm -hmm. And certainly the high school and the middle school aren't moving. So that they've been depicted so far in, in terms of all of our maps as being uh, very similar. And to me, they're not. So you say maybe shrink it back to not cover the school and just have the border be the housing part? That's. Yeah, I kind of feel know. like that too. If I were to adjust the color pencil um, for the purple section, that makes sense to me too. Yeah. Include maybe a couple more of those road frontage parcels. Get rid of the school and the town properties. Yeah, and I will say Leslie in her initial draft had she made institutionals as a zone, which we don't have now. So all town property was in this institutional or civic, whatever she called it, zone. Um, civic and institutional. Um, Tom Lister and I were not sure if we should have a civic and institutional zone because then if somebody wants to like expand a school property or move something, they would have to rezone it. But well, it's, yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say, I didn't think it was a zone, but a building type within a zone. A building type yeah. is allowed in that zone. Yeah. yeah. Civic institutional building. So Tom, Tom and I's wild, anything goes idea was that you should be able to build a civic or institutional building in any zone because we can't predict the future where someone needs to build a school um but that is arguable we're not necessarily right so if you were looking to move the line um so susan you see how KM is kind of going to cross through the middle that's republic yep yep and then this box is the school fields we got added in yep this piece in between the back and that is the Liberty Circle part of the Helios group of still owns, and they want to do housing, we think, of some sort at some point. Yep. The back piece is all the existing housing that's owned by um, Joe Cooper. It's got the Parliament, Parliament and Congress and stuff. Yep. So, so, yeah, maybe the line gets moved back. I think if you pull up, pull up Leslie's map, it shows exactly what you just described. Yeah, let me see. 
Yeah, Ooh. she's got that bright, bright yellow orange. Hmm. Yeah. He's got this is the yeah, so the blue, the kind of teal. Wow, that color was oh, totally different on my screen and on the projector. That is really hard to see on here. Well, the, this parcel and this parcel, I think, are the school. And then you've got this as a different neighborhood zone. And then this is more of a. Yeah, I think this zone. might be on my tip quicker. I think it's got a cell tower on it. Oh, I thought that was the one that said state. I thought it was state of Maine, but could be wrong. Kate, I'm looking at this um, Leslie's map here, and when you go along Canham Drive, um, what you have is the dark blue, and then the civic and institutional, right? <laughs> the one on the left. Does that property? belong to the same property as the light industrial? No, not there, no. not there, on the left. Yeah, right there. I think so, I'd have to look at the other map. No, I, I think, think, well. I think where her mouse was, I think the Sandlin's on that, and yeah. then this is the school, the, the, the lighter blue is the school. It's zoned light industrial now. I can share that. So if it's light industrial now, and I, I guess getting clear among ourselves around, yes, this, this is helpful because all of that light industrial, I think, is what I would suggest we just exclude from our recode boundaries. I'll push back a little bit right. <laughs> because if you look at the, it's hard when I'm here, but the stuff that's along 201 is a very visible part of our community. It's right in front of the schools and it's yep. developed in a really, you know, uncoordinated, uncohesive way. Yeah. And if we could encourage some better you know, in the future development that might go along better with other uses, it would be more in line with what our comp plan says. So if I hear you right, Angela, you're talking about the light industrial that is south of Canham Drive. In front of the schools. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's got yeah. like a bunch of random and things. Where the cursor is. Yeah. You know, I, I, I agree with, with Angela on that. I think Hey, if you could pull up the familiar center zone, I think it supports what Angela's describing is, you know, you could see how the lower, middle, and upper, if you pan down the lower, middle, and upper are basically a, you know, a certain swath on either side of, of Main Street going up and, you know, that what Angela was just describing would essentially be a similar type of swap right yeah. up to 295. Yeah, like, you know, do we want that, do we want it to become part of the upper village, some of these properties? Well, the big piece that's the, the upper, upper village. Right there, we, we have yeah. the cursor, that's all one ownership, that's uh, precast. That's precast, yeah. yeah. So I don't think you want to put that in upper village. No, no, not it's these over. properties here. I'm not sure what. That's what I'm saying. Whatever that community yeah. is with a couple lines, take out the things that are already, you know, forever. Yeah. And just add a little bit of that 201 frontage into it and, mm -hmm. and give it that new top zone, or whatever the name of that zone is going to be. Um, or it just formally called. Yeah. So I think, I mean, I think part of this conversation too is like, do we want, do, are these parcels, do these parcels feel like they're part of the upper village to you? Do no. these parcels over here? I don't know. Let me just follow up on Andy's comment because if that whole parcel, stick the cursor back in there so we can. Yeah, there you go. That if if that whole parcel with the small little pieces and the big piece are all owned by one, that's all precast. The three smaller parcels, one of them's the motor vehicle Napa, department, one of them's Napa, okay. and then yep. one of them's vacant. 
So okay. those three, the one most north is vacant, and I know that might soon become part of precast. Okay. So I'm, I'm just wondering if, um, does the plan for that parcel, the big parcel, get, is that coordinated with the plan for the Crooker site? If we can get the rezoning for the Crooker site, then precast will probably go out there too. So yeah. That, that yeah. would leave that site and open that up for whatever type of development we feel or the community feels. Mm -hmm. It's not the ideal spot for that now. Yeah. And, and and this is my my point, right? We shouldn't be keeping things in by who the landowner is. We should be doing it by what the comp plan says. And it's not saying precast couldn't still stay there. That's right. We're That's defining right. other uses if they decide to leave. So it's not a free for all. That's right. So I guess listening to the information being shared here and the thoughts, it seems to me that we're being a little bit more um, fine-tuned in terms of not deleting all of the light industrial, but we're deleting the light industrial up north of Canham Drive. And that we would that we would keep in the light industrial south or east of Canham Drive. I just wanted to grab the, we're looking at the same exact map, but we're just coming off with a, the satellite layer here. So, yeah, I thought it would help. And what Leslie has coded there is the EX. That's the gray. So the question is, you know, do we want to continue to keep in scope or add in scope? I don't know where, if they're coming in or out, these three parcels. Maybe yes or no, this existing very industrial precast, but then there's empty open land here that's sort of, I mean, I think you said they could potentially want to expand their industrial use there, but is that known? Is it not known? That's a sample of the property? Yes. Yeah. But yeah. yeah I Yeah, so she had coded this, this, I, I don't know what that color looks like to the people on Zoom looking at this, but it looks totally different on my computer than it does on the projector. But these lighter areas here, these she coded as EX, so that's industrial. Um, and then she coded yeah, residential mix. these is more of a residential mix. Um, okay. What I said, what I was envisioning when we're saying simplify is taking basically those, those various parcels and classifications and kind of grouping all that into the same mm -hmm. zonal boundary and saying, all right, mixed use, Residential storefront, office, the EX light industrial. I mean, all of that is suitable for that whole general zone rather than just breaking it down parcel by parcel, make it, you know, all one color and say these are the things that are, are not, you know, allowed in there. You know, maybe that, you know, salmon parcel off the roadway becomes, you know, the same as what's the VP2 now. You know, that's, you know, more of the traditional light industrial off of the roadway um, type of thing, but, you know, not wholesale, just saying, okay, we're going to cut that out of the scope. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, Rick, are your, uh, com are your comments directed at that piece south of Canham Drive? which right now there are one, two, three different zones in that area. Three or four, four maybe. One, two, yeah, I'm seeing, I'm seeing at least four different, four different building types. But well, those all... are zones, those are zones, right? Yeah, 
yeah, the way Leslie's map works is that there's all these different zones for each parcel, but they allow a mul multiple building types on each of those parcels. So what we're proposing is to simplify this into a more traditional zone thing where we still have that range of building types yeah. allowed on each one. So, you know, you could have the warehouse building type and the sort of mixed use, whatever, big building, building type, um, all those still allowed on one of those parcels. Um, you know, I think the thing that I personally find tricky in the center of Topsom with the industrial areas, and maybe Andy can speak to this more, but I don't want us to be like kind of going to people who've been operating industries here for a very long time and making them feel like we're trying to kick them out. Right. You know, so yeah. that's kind of the line I'm trying to walk. Well, if they, they grandfather, that they're okay, but yeah. like you see Sandal and saying, I'm grandfathered, you're going to rezone it, but I have some plans to expand, and expanding is not going to be allowed. So exactly. Now, now you get a, a uh -huh. sticky situation where they may have plans next year to expand, and they're just, and I've heard, the, I've heard rumors that they have. But it's so tough. It's so tough. It's, and I know we're almost going parcel by parcel. And, and as much as I thought it was confusing from our consultants, I, I can't remember their name. Leslie. Leslie. They might be on the right track. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, <laughs> get, it's really true. It's really hard to think about. Right. But that's what I'm saying. Is I don't, I don't, you know, I mean, that whole zone there, I see that those various building types that Leslie has painted are suitable, but not broken down parcel by parcel, mm -hmm. really yeah. almost expanding it to, to that whole corridor that's abutting the main road. <laughs> I think anything we can do to, to simplify yeah. uh, our, our well, understanding of this and their, you know, and other people, you know, the select board and the planning board uh, is, is, is going to be very helpful. I think we'd be wise if we, if we do reduce, just know that we, there's going to be a phase two. We just haven't tackled that parcel yet. So we get something done and something in front of the, the board and we get some activity for the town meeting next year, um, just because we don't include an area doesn't mean we won't eventually get to it, I guess. It's going gonna, it's gonna to stay the way it is. That's great advice that we should all keep in mind. Yes. So at the same time, we've there are two different things that it seems to me we're focusing on. is The major question on the table is, can we reduce the footprint a little bit and exactly where? <laughs> so that's the one thing that I would love for us to actually decide. And it seems to me the where we have where the conversation in the last five or 10 minutes is looking at that little zone, which on my map is gray. Um, and because the legend is in there, I didn't even see that there are three little parcels with zoned in two different ways. So that, um, that section that's south of Canham and east of 201, that whole, yeah, that whole thing, that I'm thinking should stay in but all the rest of the light industrial, um, current light industrial, which in Leslie's map is coded in a number of different, couple of different, three different ways, that that should be excluded. Now, my understanding, the reason for that is, is the current landowner doesn't have any major plans. However, the current landowner would object mightily to a recode. <laughs> and either, if, you know, we can, we can take that on. We can say, we're gonna keep the whole boundary, but if what we want to do is slightly reduce the, um, 
aggravation, <laughs> um, so slightly simplify our task. What we could do is just draw it back that little bit. Um, I don't know because Mark has described some various pieces within that top some annex boundary. I don't know if there are things within there that we should exclude. I, I'm not thinking we should at the moment. I'm only thinking we should exclude north of Canham currently light industrial. And I'm wondering if we've, we've had some lots of comments. Are we anywhere near feeling aligned on this or not? Well, the only thing I would say is I think we've all said we want to add back in the crooker quadrant. Definitely. And also when I'm looking at this, I don't know why the red line doesn't go all the way up to 196. Like that I seems don't know odd. Either Angela, I think that's because some of our polygons and our town owned GIS files are not perfect. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So Susan, other than the light industrial, what about the, uh, at least on my map, is the NX-M mobile home neighborhood in brown, uh, north of the uh, north of the annex? We'd be including that too, I assume. We would be we would be getting rid of all that. Uh, that's what I meant. Getting yeah, including yeah. it to be uh, in in up. in another later on, like lopping that off to be taken on at a different time. Mm -hmm. I mean, the mobile home in the recode sort of didn't make sense to me because we already have a mobile home park overlay zone. Yep. Um, so it kind of seemed redundant to me to have both. Yeah. Yeah, and a way to say why we're leaving that out is also we're trying to reduce, and that's on the northern, you know, boundary of what we're doing. That's right. It just makes sense to me. The thing I'm struggling with a little bit is the all the schools, <laughs> and how that fits together with all the residential uses in the top semantic zone. Like that seems like a weird mishmash of things, <laughs> but I don't know how to solve it. Yeah, I don't know if we want to like make this zone look more like a gerrymandered political district. <laughs> yeah, exactly, <laughs> Raya. There are the two school sections in the fields that we know will stay athletic fields for the schools. With so some do you want well, civic and an, an institutional building to have their own zone? Do people feel strongly about that either way? I would want to hear something from, you know, Kirk and Leslie about the pros and cons. Um, one of the things that Leslie said during that first rollout meeting was, I've created this many zones, we may want to have fewer zones. And sort of the pros and cons of why, you know, if we get rid of a separate zone for civic and institutional buildings, there probably are some pluses and minuses, but maybe the pluses for getting rid of that zone outweigh the minuses for Topsom, but it seems to me we need to have that discussion. Um, and I don't know if we have to make that decision today in order to give direction to Leslie in terms of altering the boundary, making it a little simpler for ourselves. Hey, could you paint what uh, in a different color what we're uh, what we're talking about deleting so everybody knows uh, we're on the same page? What do you mean deleting? The schools area? Yeah. No, no. Uh, the uh, the light industrial uh, and the mobile yeah. home. Uh, the You're mobile testing home. my ability to use Adobe Acrobat, Joe. Yeah. I can make myself paint right now. I got it up on the screen. If you don't oh, okay. you yeah, actually. No, I, I'm I'm suffering to pull it out. Uh, I, uh, I got this thing going on. Is that anything that excites people, or do we want to go back to the generation? No, that's, that's okay. Because I, I I have her purple zone here. I you know maybe this I accidentally drew more sand and stuff than people want, so maybe I should go back to yours. Um, okay. We're not including any of this because of political reasons, you said. <laughs> Uh, reasons that an existing building, uh, pro existing use, and he plans on expanding. 
Right. These are all fields and forests, right? And then this one's a, um, a building and this one's right. a building. So that's kind of like in between, right? Yeah. Speak up a little bit, Raya. I'm sorry, I'm not I'm having trouble hearing you. Is my microphone's not on. Where are we? They are on, actually. <laughs> um we know this is high school this is a field this is state property over here so yep. why you know that we're saying do we include it or do we not right we're definitely now going to include these three that are bordering 201 and also this one for some reason so yes. mm -hmm. but then all, but not these this is middle school this is a middle school field this is another middle school field so that could probably i mean again we need their That's advice high school that. That's the high school baseball field. Oh, sorry. Okay. And the other thing that was on Leslie's maps was everything west of Augusta Road to 295. So everything that little. Oh, on this little, side. Yeah, those one, two, three, four, those four parcels to the left. Oh, wow. Line. So we would, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's not on the purple thing. Right, but and they're all classed as light industrial right now. Now, those are east of the, oh, yeah. uh, they're east of 201. They, where my mouse is dancing up and down, does that show up? Yeah, they're between Old Augusta Road and 201. Yep, they're wrong. Are you talking about these ones where I just drew that line? Mm -hmm. No, I think they're like, no. you're talking about the north. Yeah, oops. These guys. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. So, yeah, this one is not. Because right? if we're not including this and we're not including this, then we're certainly not including that, right? Well, that's the question. Okay. That would yeah. make sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, one of the things that you talked about, Kate, with Tom is, and I don't know how thoroughly you've talked that over, but it sounds like you came to the conclusion um at least softly <laughs> that we don't need a separate zone for civic and institutional it's just a way of describing what is currently there on the ground but the need for that separate district really doesn't exist that is what Tom and I talked about just because in terms of, you know, like when they built the school here and then in terms of future expansion, it's a lot easier if you just allow schools in any or, or civic buildings in any zone. Um, if you want. Um, but again, that is open to discussion and the consultants can share some pros and cons on that. Now, and the other thing that we could do today is convey, if we can come to some clear decisions, we can convey our ideas without it being in stone. They can be up for discussion, you know, to one of the things is to simplify by eliminating the civic and institutional zone. And so when you do that in this area, um, what we're doing is keeping a small part of the light industrial that's south of Canem, but eliminating from Recode all of the stuff north of Canem that's light industrial. And, and the, um, the mobile home because we don't need that because it's, we already have an overlay district there. All right, so keeping Kate's purple, but adding four properties. So what zone would we want that part to be adopted into? Which part? The light industrial, those four parcels south of Canada. Well, I guess the discussion we haven't had here. What, yeah. are, what are their new zones? How do we define our new zones? Yeah. <laughs> I think we're just talking about whether that's going to be in the scope of work. Yeah. Or yeah. Effort. yeah. That was why yeah. this one, I guess. I just, wasn't sure if anyone had, I just wasn't sure if anyone had a strong thought on where that fits in with other top and center neighborhoods. I mean, even the precast site, the bigger one, was a, wasn't it a snowmobile shop or a yeah. shop? I mean, it's really commercial what it is that that quarter is still commercial. Mm -hmm. 
And I think that's probably what it'll end up being, but that's down the road. Yeah. Hey, having heard your explanation about why you didn't want to separate that, I uh, my concern was more people understanding, um, looking at the maps uh, mm -hmm. for clarity, but that, that makes, makes sense to me. I was not advocating for another uh, new setup. I liken it to the same as what is listed here in R1. You know, the one side and the Williams Cone schools don't show up in separate civil Yeah, we don't do that now. R1, so why would we? Sometimes do that, some we don't. We don't have Forum. So what? What do we think we want, we need to talk more about West 1695? Do we want to see if we can get someone who's more of a stakeholder in that area to attend a meeting? I, I'm throwing this out here to everyone here. Has there been any requests or the people asking about that property? We had one in person on representative on this one asking a little bit about it. And they want. So just to remind myself, if that wasn't in the the zones in the comp plan that was in our scope of work that we're supposed to be working on, I wouldn't recommend adding them. But if they were in there, I also wouldn't necessarily recommend taking them out. And I can't remember if they were part of it or not. I looked and I don't think they're part of it. The they're not. No, nope, they're, they're not listed as a catalyst site. No, nope, we didn't. It doesn't go west of 295. So in Andy's really wise advice is it's not saying it's not important to relook at that zoning. We're just saying it's not part of this first phase and it's still going to get cleaned up, right? As part of the effort that Kurt is doing. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. And those I'm not sure parcels that we're talking about there are currently zoned is, and I'm going to butcher this, but it's mixed use commercial one. Yeah, it basically it's means you can C yeah. CCD and BP. And it already has, uh, well, part of it, the part on the south side of 196 already has a master planning option. Like that coding is newer than most of our code. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So update. So we currently have a master plan development in our code. That's going to get cleaned up mm. and potentially try and add a form-based code option to people using it. Um, but that does, that is something that's currently existent that the people, if Say those people who own that large parcel south of 196, west of 295, like they were, they would come in and do a master plan development, probably. Like Andy, if we did, if we weren't doing recode, you guys would come in to do a traditional master plan development at the Crooker site. So it sounds like in terms of this, in terms of this phase of recode, <laughs> this round, that we should also exclude that west of 295 area that right now the way leslie has looked at it it's all master plan development mm -hmm. and i didn't realize that part of it the the south part of it has already had some master planning um activity going on and it would all be part of kirk's cleanup so is there tentative agreement on excluding that piece? Well, I would just word it differently. I don't think we're excluding it. I think it was never named catalyst site in the comp plan, right? And this recoding is focusing on the catalyst areas? No, <laughs> the, thing, the thing about the, the section in the plan that's called catalyst sites and future neighborhood centers. The beginning of that, 
there are lots of areas that are identified by sort of walkable circles, right? And, and this area is on it. But as you, as you continue in that section, there are only four sections that are developed in more detail, right? Okay. The upper village, the lower village, the Topsom Fair Mall and the Crooker site. Those are the four that are developed, but that's not to say that those are the only catalyst sites and future neighborhood centers that the plan vision applies to. Okay. I get that's helpful. Thank you, Susan. Yeah. yeah. So it's up to us. We could have it in there or not. That's right. That's right. And it sounds like it might be a wise decision at this point to not include that while we're not including the north of Canham light industrial area plus mobile home section. Sounds good to me. Any strong opinions? That makes sense to me. And we are including Kruger site. We're definitely including Crooker site. So is that clear enough for Kate, for you to? Uh, this is fair, yep. I feel, yeah, I can, I can also update um, one of those maps and send it around to everyone if that's helpful for you all to review. I mean, yeah. in a sense, kind of are there something that can be yeah. added? Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. To, like to have them in our, in our drive. Yeah, yeah, I'll send a PDF out. I mean, in a sense, the, the west of 295 area wasn't going to maybe cause a lot of agita to us because it's all just master plan development. And yet, drawing in that boundary and making the project just that much simpler um, feels very pretty wise to me at this point. Correct me if I'm wrong, the master plan development process will utilize the building types and parameters that are in the form base. Right. That's right. Or is that not accurate? No, I mean, that's not what we currently have, but that would be what how I would like to see it updated. And I think it's going to have to come at that second phase. I, mean, I think if we yeah. want to do that now, we got to throw it back in, and I think that's going to. Well, I said, yeah, without seeing the without seeing the draft of the master plan. Yeah, that that too. Yeah. That, that makes a big difference. Okay. Before you close, Susan, I just wanted to throw out something to the group that I learned today. The fourth largest city in the United States, I think, grew at seventeen percent over the last five years. It's Houston. Mm -hmm. They have zero zoning in the whole city. Mm -hmm. Isn't that amazing when you think about that? So they're infamous for that. Yeah. How do they survive? A lot mm -hmm. of people live in flood zones. <laughs> I don't know. That's, That's right. right. <laughs> that was the the <laughs> they were wiped out by a hurricane. It's the wild west. <laughs> I just found that it's, so it's like the Paris of the South, too, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Don't encourage that, Andy. No, I, didn't, yeah. I just wanted to point out as we go through. <laughs> I know, I know. In tops and rain. There's okay. a book that's going to be coming out about zoning. Uh, I just heard it on a podcast. I'll share it. Yeah, it's like it'll that. come out in a couple of weeks, I guess. And it, that's one of their features, like the good things that came out of no zoning and then a couple of the downsides, but there's a lot of good, you know, spoiler alert. Right? I'm not suggesting, Susan, that we do that. I'm just saying <laughs> we might want to just be careful how deep we go. They so. were able to avoid some of the biggest folly that came from good intentions of zoning. And yeah. it turned out, yeah. Or, yeah. Well, what we've discussed today, we've scaled back a little bit, We've simplified a little bit. That's what we're asking Leslie to do. So I think we're moving in the right direction in terms of less um, 
granular in our approach to recode. So one thing to mention for your calendars, um, please come if you can um, in person to August, I think, is it August 11th, Kate? Yeah. The, um, yeah. Is the planning board workshop. Um, Kirk is gonna join on Zoom and explain his process for code cleanup. Um, yeah, I have, yeah, planning board will have the documents before then. Um, yeah, so we'll talk about the code cleanup part starting on that day. What time is it? 6.30. Will they have those documents that changes ahead of time or will it uh, um, be talked through at the meeting? So the it's only the code cleanup part, Joe. Yeah, right. So probably just the same links that you all have and okay. people will be encouraged to comment. Yeah. And, um, you know, we're starting to, Tom and I have started to sort of find a list a list of things that need to be discussed, including minimum lot sizes um, and some other parts of the code cleanup that we encounter a lot in daily work um, that are currently very confusing. <laughs> we have one meeting ourselves the week before that, right? And we yeah. didn't get to that part of our agenda. So some of us I see have started to put some comments on some of that. Oh, good, stuff. awesome. So we'll make sure that that's what we spend a lot of good time on at our next meeting, right? So it's actually the same week. We'll, we're going to be meeting on the 8th, Monday the 8th, and the planning board workshop that we are invited to is going to be the 11th. So the same week. Yep. So that, the 8th, I took off that day, but maybe I'll send Tom Lister in my stead. I got a conflict here too. You have a conflict? I might be able to work it out. But I'm going to have a couple during the year anyway. We're yeah, to... it, I might be on vacation then too. We're still sorting that out, but we usually do take off the of first two weeks of August. So I'm not certain, but I may not make it. So maybe we end up canceling our monthly meeting, gang. <laughs> Well, do we want to reschedule it? Is it important for us to be better prepared for that workshop with her? Or is that, oh no, because we thought it was more of a planning board thing, right? Mm -hmm. we're just, code, we code. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So so I'd say take a break in August. Yeah, I, mean, I think, yeah. Other well, than the planning yeah. board. Yeah. You know, I think letting planning board take ownership of the code cleanup is a good idea for a lot yes. of us. So, yeah. You know, you all should, I, I can kind of send you some of the things to pay particular attention to that you know we want to look at in terms of the content, but by and large, that's yeah. really all we're looking for, right? Is is yeah. its in, potential impact on on the content. Yes, yeah. and we still have a workshop on the twenty eighth of this month. If I, that's yeah. right. So we have the workshop, and um, I think planning board will appreciate our taking the lead on the rest of, re of recode in terms of form-based code um, and our mapping out a workshop schedule on that once we get our feedback to Leslie and get her response, then we can sort of, you know, I, I think that it makes sense for us to not have our regular monthly meeting given vacation schedules. Um, and make sure that we attend that planning board workshop if we can. And then July 28th. All right. And there'll be some things that we'll handle between now and then in terms of the select board workshop on the bike ped committee. Um, but those will come out in emails to everyone. And I think that brings us to our conclusion. Any final comments before we close? It's worked remarkably well for somebody who <laughs> wants to be with her team <laughs> that I'm, <laughs> I'm out here on Foreside Road and you're in the town office. <laughs> you did a good job chairing remotely, Susan. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. All right, folks, we can cross off the eighth. Kate, you're
you can celebrate <laughs> that day. <laughs> All right, everyone. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thanks for that link on the book. So. Yeah.